We're gonna give you now 21 things that you can go back and do with your athletes to reduce injury and increase sports performance. Number one, lift hard and heavy with good form. It's an obvious one. Lift in three planes. Now coaches ask me, for football, what should I lift and how much should I round out? 50 to 60% of your lifting should still be in the sagittal plane. It should still be squats, should still be pressing, should still be pulling. Frontal plane, so the side to side, 25 to 30%, and then that rotational, uh, 10 to 20%. You just need to increase it a little bit. Now I'm not saying with this that every lifting session needs to be balanced like this. Periodized resistance training. Now when I say periodized, I know that there are a lot of theories out there on how to do it, but I'm just gonna tell you, other than just reps and sets, there's a lot of different ways you can periodize things. Focus on stretching and strengthening the hamstrings and glutes. This is very important. If you do nothing else, focus on this. Reduce the pressing on your back, bench press, dumbbell press, all of that, to less than 25% of your overall pressing motions. You will find out that your overhead press carries over to chest strength and chest press. However, it doesn't op operate in the reverse. Have a multi-dimensional warm-up with low weights and don't let your athletes wear shoes. We have reduced the amount of ankle injuries by having our athletes warm up in just their sock feet. Now you can't do that in the weight room if people are lifting. It's obviously a health hazard. Put them in the gym or don't allow anybody to lift until your warm up is done. But if you can get your athletes out of their $75 to $300 pair of shoes that are highly supportive, you are going to reduce the ankle injuries. The reason being, if you could not move your hand for six months, it was put into a cast, and then I take you out of that and tell you to go play basketball or play something where you've got to use your hand, you're going to end up with wrist injuries because your hand is that dynamic. Your foot is just as dynamic as your hand. When your foot becomes dead because you're in supportive shoes, your ankle has to absorb all those forces. Don't allow your athletes to lift in high tops or having their ankles reps, and I put an asterisk after that, unless the athletic trainer tells them they have to. Do as much lifting as possible while standing. The more you have the athletes supporting themselves in three-dimensional space, then load them, the more carryover strength you're going to have the more athletic strength that they're gonna have. You might not be able to lift as much, but the athletic strength is gonna be developed a lot more and you're gonna reduce your injuries. Train unilaterally, so one arm at a time, or contralaterally, using right leg, left arm, or vice versa. Even if it's a stepping pattern, stepping and pressing, alternating stepping and pressing. Have your plyometrics cycle. I have been to schools where they don't do plyometrics. I believe in plyometrics. And then I've been to other schools where they're doing box drops all year round, nonstop. You can't do that. Plyometrics should take less than five minutes generally. Focus on building pulling muscles. Your athletes should be working just as hard on their back and their hamstrings as they are on their pushing muscles. Proper metabolic conditioning. Again, and when we go into this, we will argue with coaches. They will tell us, yes, but my athletes are winded. You know, they're standing over there breathing like this. I'm gonna give you an example from wrestling. You guys all know how big a wrestling ring is, right? Wrestling mat. How many laps do they usually run while they're wrestling each other? They don't. So we take our wrestlers and they say, well, I gotta run my, and we still go to almost every high school we've worked with so far, their wrestling team still goes and runs for 20 minutes. I gotta get my athletes in shape. That's the best way to do it. They get tired during their match. They're not tired because you don't run them enough. You run them wrong. And I'll take a, a wrestling coach and I'll have them get on a pull-up bar, pull themselves up into a, like a crunch position so they're hanging there in a fetal position. Tell them to hang as long as they possibly can. Tell me when you're gonna, when you're gonna fatigue and drop. And they start telling me, I'll go over and support them. I'll hold them up for an extra 10, 15 seconds. Then they'll just completely get down to the ground. I'll hand them a pair of 10 pound dumbbells. Drop to the floor, give me a push up, stand up and jump. So we call them super burpees. Give me 12 of those as quick as possible. 
Okay, great. And they're down there breathing like this. I go, how far did you just run? Why are you breathing so hard? Well, I didn't run. The reason why your athletes are breathing hard has very little to do with their cardiovascular training. What happens when an athlete contracts mus their muscles really, really hard for that short period of time is they build up their blood acidity. The only way your body knows how to reduce the acidity of the blood is to breathe. The faster you breathe, the faster your enzymes work, the better in shape you are, the faster you recover. However, again, if you go make your athletes run for longer than two minutes, and I would even say get that less than 90 seconds, you're not teaching your athlete how to recover as fast as possible. Running sprints in the off season is exactly what you need to do. Running sprints in season, that will allow you guys to have more coaching time. And what I mean by that is when an athlete's breathing hard, all bent over and they're like this, you can't coach them at all. They can't hear you, they can't listen. Universities have done studies that showed the delay of response from simple mathematical equations from athletes who are trained correctly to incorrectly is about a two second delay. Get done running some sprints, have an athlete stand there and just ask them, what's 24 plus 58? Two seconds longer to ask that question, to answer that question. If that delay is two seconds, what's it like on the field? Train your athletes correctly. Seated knee lifts, really simple for training the iliopsoas, which stabilizes the lower back. Have your athletes sit up nice and straight, just like you guys are, well, some of you guys are. Lift their knee up above 90 degrees. You'll find some of your athletes cannot. Have them hold it for three seconds. You're gonna find out your athletes have to actually pivot their hip, kind of arch the lower back the wrong way to lift their hips. Use rubber bands, not just as a power lifting aid. Train multi-dimensionally. Use them so you can train, press, and pull in three-dimensional space, just like your athletes do on the field. Work on some muscle activations. You guys don't realize your athletes are sitting or laying down somewhere between 12 and 18 hours a day. Their hamstrings and hips and lower back have no idea how to move. Have your athletes always working on their speed, agility, and quickness and footwork in the off season. You will end up, like I said before, you will end up, we've done this before, we've had two kids in our program, one that didn't make a team, became a starter, and another kid in one season went from riding the bench to the team captain. Teach athletes to pivot with their hips and with their ankles, not with their knees and not with their lower back. So if they're absorbing force, it's not push like this, it's pivot. It allows the glutes to get involved. And if you get the glutes involved, you end up with a lot less ACL strains. Teach your athletes to jump, land, and cut with their knees over their feet. Most of your athletes will feel like they're standing bow-legged to actually land anytime that they jump or they start to move with their knees wide. It is becoming so prevalent today that athletes, before they jump, they allow their knees to collapse. When they land, they let their knees collapse to absorb force. Have your athletes stretch. Even if it's not doing that much, it keeps them active, keeps them feeling better. Even if they're stretching their hamstrings and their range of motion's not increasing right away, still have them stretch. Give them an off day stretching program. Develop core in three planes. They have to be able to stabilize themselves in three dimension. You have to teach your athletes how to eat, especially football players. Just because we lift hard doesn't mean we can eat everything that's in front of us. And your athletes have all had their health program. They all know, theoretically know what a carbohydrate is, what a protein is, how much theoretically they're supposed to eat. But until you say, turkey good, pizza bad, they don't realize that. Turkey make you better athlete. Potato chip make you worse athlete. They don't, they don't put it together. So teach your athletes to eat better so they recover better and they become much better athletes for you guys. Thank you very much.